Happy holidays, everybody, and welcome to my 2015 $250 budget build. Now, this build was originally intended for a friend of mine, but um, uh, he changed his mind and some things came up, so I'm going to end up just selling these parts, unfortunately. But budget builds are something I really love, and I'm pretty proud of this one, so I decided to make a video and go ahead and show it off. Now, as I mentioned, the budget was $250, and that includes the OS, CPU, graphics card, everything you need to have a fully functional gaming computer. The one thing that I will say it did not include, though, is a mouse and keyboard or monitor. This is simply for the computer itself. I figured most people already have these things laying around, so there's no point in going out and spending a whole bunch of money on them. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. For the CPU, I actually got this from a friend. It's not an i7-4790K. Looks can be deceiving. Instead, in here, you probably won't be able to read that, but we have an i5-4570. Now, a friend of mine was upgrading to a 4790K, which is why I have the box here, and was willing to sell me his old i5. I picked this up for $80. Now, you could probably get an AMD FX6300 or an Intel i3, for around this price, but my friend was nice, and since I helped him upgrade his computer, like I said, I got this for $80, and great processor for the money. Now that means I'm going to need a LGA1150 motherboard. And yes, this is also not a K-Edition processor, so the stock heatsink will be fine. I was planning on uh, attempting to do a base clock overclock on this. I'm not sure if that's possible with uh, non-K Haswell CPUs or on this Gigabyte motherboard that I purchased. But I was going to attempt it. Um, the person who's buying the parts for me now is using it as a media PC, so it's not going to be overclocked. Kind of disappointed there, but it's still a great processor, especially for the price. Moving on. As I mentioned, we need an LGA1150 motherboard. So I picked up the Z87DS3H from Gigabyte. Now, this is not new. This is refurbished, uh, kind of like the CPU is used. Um, Purchase it off Newegg, along with the power supply and RAM. Together, the total for those three parts were $99.97, which is pretty good with a $20 off coupon. So the total was $109 or whatever beforehand. Or, it doesn't sound right. Sorry, it was a $10 off coupon, but still. Great deal from Newegg, 8 gigs of RAM, 500 watt silver edition power supply and motherboard for $99. Couldn't beat it. So I went ahead and picked this up. Now I went with the, the Z87 chipset because not only are they cheaper than Z97s, they still offer pretty much the same features, minus some security functionality and a few other things I believe. I, I don't remember what the exact differences are. But basically I wanted the full 4 RAM slots uh, for upgradability and I wanted a pretty much a full-size motherboard. This isn't quite full-size, it's a bit shorter. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up though, just to show you guys, I guess. Um, I mean, it came with the back plate or IO shield, install disc, which I mean, you should probably go to the motherboard manufacturer's webpage and download the drivers and stuff there anyways, but it did come with that, which is nice. And then the motherboard itself, wrapped in some nice, fancy anti-static bagging. There was an anti-static uh, foam in the bottom, but I took that out and used that for another project. It's it's a fairly basic board in all honesty, but at this price you really can't complain. It has USB 3.0 and I mean, what else could you ask for in a cheap motherboard? It gets the job done. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back in there. It didn't come with SATA cables though. I was kind of disappointed by that. I have a bunch of them laying around but I mean for the price like I said you really can't complain uh, the reviews were kind of bad on this uh, being refurbished I'm hoping this one works because this has been sitting around for quite a while so it's um, beyond the return deadline so hoping for the best there so as I mentioned I picked up a power supply as well the price of that board let me uh, grab that for you actually was actually $40 before the whole $10 off coupon, so not bad for a Z87 motherboard. 
And that brings us to the power supply. Also purchased off Newegg and also is $40. Now the great thing about this is that this power supply, brand new and trusted brand EVGA. And what really shocked me is that it's rated Silver Plus. Uh, silver, yeah, sorry, yeah, Silver Plus. It's not modular, but at $40, a 500 watt brand name Silver Plus power supply, an absolute steal in my opinion. I believe it's even cheaper now on Newegg. Uh, that might have been just a special or whatever, but couldn't beat it. It's not opened. I'm not going to open it because I'm sure the person that I'm selling this to is going to love it. Really not too much to talk about there. It's a power supply. It meets the power requirements. Great deal. Now then, the graphics card. Probably one of the main components here, seeing as this was a gaming computer. So I found a GTX 670 on Craigslist. Now before I tell you the price or anything like that, I was originally looking at a 7950, however the guy wouldn't respond to my text messages after agreeing on a price of $100. So I shopped around a lot and I found this GTX 670. I was kind of reluctant due to the two gigs of VRAM and it is an older card. However, after doing some research, I found out that this is probably faster than that 7950 that I was going to buy and it was only $80. Now looking at the benchmarks um, of some games that are posted online, I found that this kind of trades blows with the 7970 slash 280X, they're both the same card, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's a great deal. And if you don't really know what the different graphics cards are, if you want me to put it in terms of like a PS4, for example, it's hard to compare AMD and NVIDIA hardware, and the PS4 uses an AMD graphics card. But as I mentioned, this trades blows with the 7970. So assuming this is the same, a 7970 is roughly equal to two PS4s in terms of processing power. So that, just think about that for a second. Two PS4s from an $80 card. And so it's really a pretty good buy. As you can see, the plastic is still on it. I just cleaned this card up, actually. I took it apart. Maybe I'll throw in a couple of pictures there. But uh, the person I'm selling the computer to now didn't want the graphics card because it's being used as a media PC, which is a real shame. Um, it's honestly pretty comparable to a new GTX 960 2GB. It's slightly slower, but for the price, it's pretty much the same. Well, not even for the price. It's pretty much the same, period. Uh, so it's still a very good card. It's based on the NVIDIA GK104 processor, I want to say. Yeah, I don't have the number right in front of me, but I'll post a picture. If I'm wrong, you, you can see in the picture. The same processor that's used in the GTX 680, 690, 760, 760 Ti, which is actually a rebrand of this card. This is exactly the same as a 760 Ti, which is something a lot of people don't know. And then also the GTX 770. So, by all means, not a bad card at all. It should have no problem playing any modern titles. Now, as far as longevity goes, it could probably be better, and it is a blower style, but that's kind of what I was looking for for the case that I picked up, which I'll get into later. I wish I had saved a screenshot or something of the listing for this ad so you guys could see it, but I did not. Moving on. All right. For the RAM, I found this Evixer Core Series, 1600MHz DDR3. I've never heard of this brand before, but it had pretty good reviews on Newegg. And it has a red LED, which I thought was nice and would have complemented the red and black 7950 that I had picked out originally. It will clash with the GTX on the 670. I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but there is kind of some green writing here, which is unfortunate. I mean, it's a budget build, so... Um, like design really wasn't a priority here. This was strictly performance. And so that's why I don't really care too much about that. RAM for the most part is RAM. Newegg was uh, considering this for like a top pick or something. I got an email regarding that. So it, I mean, it's, I guess it's pretty good. It was only $30 though. So I mean, eight gigs for $30. Some people might be complaining though that it's one gay or it's only one stick. Ideally, yes, I would have gotten two sticks. That way both sticks of RAM can be accessed at the same time, thereby effectively doubling the memory bandwidth. But I couldn't find any two gig sticks for the same price as this one. And this leaves more room for upgradability. 
So one stick for now. Ah, uh, the hard drive. This technically was not paid for. This was donated, kind of, from a RROD Xbox 360. It's only 120 gigs. It's nothing special. It's only gonna be able to store a few games on it, but it's free. And come on, who doesn't have a broken Xbox 360 laying around? So I'm not gonna talk too much about that. And then some thermal paste. Uh, once again, my friend who bought the 4790K also purchased a 212 Evo to go on it. And there was leftover thermal paste. So that's sitting here. And now the only thing left is the case. It's nothing special, but I have it sitting right down here. It is an old Antec, I don't know what it's called, something, something, something. Nothing special at all. Just a really old case, something to hold all the parts in, because literally the case does not matter. When I built my budget build originally last year, I had it sitting out on a desk. So, uh, yeah, that was the least of my worries here. This build was strictly focusing on budget. And that's pretty much all I have. Now, I'm sure some of you might be upset that, well, you didn't pay for the case or the hard drive what about those well if you think about it the total price of everything came out to be 259.97 so that leaves leaves you about forty dollars still of wiggle room you can easily pick up a case for 20 bucks and you can get a hard drive for 10 or a little bit more and even then we're still under 300 dollars, which is more than the 250 dollar budget but still a great price now you might have noticed i left out the os the os is Windows 7. Now, if you're a student, chances are you can get Windows free through your school, through Microsoft DreamSpark. You should look into that, and that's how I was able to get it for this computer. With both me and my friend being college students, we took advantage of this program, and, we're, and we were going to install Windows 7 onto his machine. Like I said, he ended up not wanting this computer, so I still have my Windows 7, li 7 license, and the parts are probably going to go to a new home. With the exception of the GeForce GTX 670 which I will be keeping and most likely using as a hybrid physics card with my AMD R9 Fury. So if you want to check that out and see how it goes, maybe see some 4K benchmarks, then I'll probably be uploading some of those videos soon. And I might just throw in a little video, maybe a little clip of this going into my personal system, but um, that's really not the focus of this video. This video was about the budget build, and yes, it was slightly over budget at $259.97, however, I have to say that is an extraordinary price considering what was in here. It can run most games at pretty high settings. For example, when I put this GTX 670 in my personal system with an i7-5820K to test it to make sure it worked, it recommended high settings for Fallout 4. And when I tested it out on Ultra, frame rate stayed around 30 FPS, which honestly isn't too bad considering the price. Call of Duty Black Ops 3, frame rate was odd. It was definitely playable. It was either running at 30 or 60 the whole time. The odd part though is that it was never in between. It was one or the other. So it was very smooth, but kind of odd to see it uh, just jumping between those two numbers. Definitely playable, that maxed out, I mean. So if you wanna turn some settings down, you, this card will run anything, I think. I don't think there's a single game out there that won't be able to run on this card. Great buy and I think that pretty much ends this video. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. I know it was over budget. Still a great card. I looked up um, what a new build would cost at like Micro Center and it was about $800. I'll show you the cart picked out similar hardware, uh, an i5 and a GTX 960, which will give you very similar frames to this card here. So if you look at what you're saving by buying used, it's, it's enormous. Honestly, I don't see the value in going with a new card over or new hardware over used, um, especially if you're on a budget. So I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. Uh, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know how my video could be improved in some ways. Um, thanks for watching.